James Faust and Sarah Harris with the Dallas Film Society, the uh, Dallas International Film Festival. How are you guys doing today? Doing hey. good. Doing real good. All right. You guys have been around for the complete 10 years. Let's yeah. go back to back in the day. We were in a uh, model home of sorts. We were working on the floor, <laughs> yep. eating cold pizza like we were in college, <laughs> and um, worrying. Dig, yeah, it, it, you know, we were worrying about if this thing would ever get off the ground. Here we are, 10 years later. What What is your fondest memories about <laughs> back in the day? <laughs> Uh, fondest memories or what kind? Yeah, yeah, what okay. does fondest um, mean in this yeah. sentence? Yeah, like if we're talking about like, the things I remember the most. Um, what do you remember the most? Ten actually, years ago, two things I remember the most. I got um, the the uh, expose story that my a buddy of mine Jay did for CBS 11 when he snuck around <laughs> and hid in the bushes outside of our secret offices before we announced. Yeah. And then bam, there's a story on TV. I'm like, oh, that's great. We're out. And then the pre the, the first press conference, which is still some of my first Facebook photos, yeah. are that press conference we did in, in Victory Park. Park. And we we're like all sitting there like, man, your hair was different. My hair we were was all way dressed shorter. up a lot fancier then. Oh yeah, we were much fancier then, yeah. <laughs> so my is that kicking it off is one of my favorite memories. It's just like, man, we just did this from Deep Ellum to this. Holy crap. See, one of mine is also kicking it off, but it was opening night that first year. Oh yeah. When we had uh, Lauren Bacall and I was in charge of escorting her from the red carpet to her seat at the front of the Majestic and I was just like, I was 23 and going, what am I doing here? Like this is, I mean it was, it was that night, it was the opening night, it was, you know, everything, all the adrenaline was rushing and we were about to kick off this 11 day event and I'm standing here talking to Lauren Bacall, <laughs> the legend, and she tells me to get my bangs out of my face. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. That's <laughs> yes, awesome. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so fast forward to 10 years. What can we expect this year? We have 10 year anniversary. You got some awesome films that you guys are programmed from. You know, you got it's like Mrs. Dash seasoning, or it's like a gumbo because you have a little of Austin Film Festival, you have a little of South by, you have a little of Sundance, you have a little of stuff that you found throughout the year. So tell us about this year in the films. Well, I, I think we're happy with 31, maybe 32 countries now. I think we've extended countries represented. I'm excited about the narrative feature and doc programs with some really great uh, world premieres in there. I'm excited about what a lot of what we're doing in bringing craftsmanship and the filmmakers that, are, that actually make the films the next level of people. Like, um, the guys from Halfway, the guys from In View. I mean, these are new filmmakers that are going to be hearing from in the future. Uh, and I really enjoy our international program. I, I think that's something that I will strive to, you know, hold up the middle part of our festival name, Dallas International Film Festival, and to have those people coming in. The Turkish guys are coming in for Takim the team. It's a Turkish family soccer movie, although family in that they speak differently in family movies in Turkey, but it's a Turkish family soccer movie that kind of combines like Fight Club and the Mighty Ducks into one movie, and it's incredible. And I'm excited that the city can be a part of that, that we're on people's calendars and they come out and they go, oh wow, yeah, I know that the festival's coming and I know that I can see X. I know that my neighborhood or my friends will find something at this festival every year. And so, yeah, I'm, and I'm excited to open in the city performance hall. Well, can't wait to get, I love that building. It's perfect size. <laughs> so what are some of the hidden gems this year at the film festival? You know, we've heard E.T. that's coming out, Booger Red, <laughs> which was at the uh, Austin Film Festival. Mm -hmm. What's are really of the hidden gems that may or may not get the press Farmer that veteran. should get? Farmer Veteran is world premiering here, and uh, it's about a veteran who's done three combat tours. He's struggling with PTSD, and he goes back home to North Carolina to kind of find healing on a farm. It's a very intimate and personal journey. Um, the whole filmmaking crew, there's like five of them, they're all coming out and it's it's just a really beautiful story of this of kind of what our veterans are going through and um, I mean I'm just I'm really thrilled that's one that you know you're gonna discover at a festival you're not gonna see that normally released you know and um, it's, it's a very powerful story I think the doc, I'm really just excited about the doc lineup in general there's some crazy strong um, personal like, stories of like you know want to pep you up and like go take on the world kind of kind of stories yeah, I, think, yeah. I was gonna say one thing I noticed about not just the uh, 
just the film like slate in general there's a lot of like you said documentary films are strong there's also it seems like a lot of playing with form a lot of kind of hybrid yeah. films yes. yeah. and then on the on the other side of that a lot of um, I don't say issues based film but LGBTQ films yeah, yeah. a lot of activist films and then there's a lot of women filmmakers it, look, it just yeah. feels good to be a part of this like can you tell me about kind of your approach to like pushing the boundaries a bit and kind of getting outside of yeah. that well yeah I mean I, I think sometimes the films dictate it but we actually are always looking uh, we were asked this earlier about we're always looking to be representative of the world that we live in the world that we see and the world we see is a very diverse city so Dallas is a very international city and the world we see is very diverse and, and we're and a diverse, we're diverse. Team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like, this, this programming team is yeah. not your typical yeah, it, festival team here it, it's, so. it's kind of funny so uh, we uh, we are uh, excited that we can share I was telling her I think we have 11 female directors in, that are between shorts and features in this festival at least six people of color that are short and not not international films just in in US based films that are making films and yes These are we just are the things that we're interested in yeah I mean. and we're not actively going we need we don't have a quota yeah, we're we don't just, do we're the quote thing. But we do realize, oh, that's a great story. There's a film we were just talking about that white girl, if you know, if it was made by a male instead of a female, it might be a wholly different conversation. And it might be a conversation that would be rude and seem different. The movie would be seen differently, possibly. But it's a conversation starter by showing this film. And believe me, it's a conversation starter. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. You guys have always hit it out of the ballpark every year. I've been with you guys for 10 years. You, yeah. always, you. always have hit it out of the ballpark. So let's go back to last year. Two weeks after the festival ended, you're starting to plan 10th year. Where do you guys start with programming? I mean, what do you guys look at? What are your sources? What festivals have really talked to you? Well, I mean, I personally, I, now I'm working for other festivals year-round as well, so I'm not taking a break. <laughs> um, but I'm like watching things on a different kind of spectrum of, I'm, I'm watching things a little bit earlier that I can consider and kind of see down, coming down the pipeline. And so I think, you know, our, we usually rest for at least a month. We watch a lot of, you know, other things that inspire us. I will see X-Men twice between... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll watch like the Bourne movies or the other stuff to remember what other elements I like. And I think we just kind of, it, it's very organic. It's just kind of, it's conversations with our friends and, you know, within our network to yeah. see kind of what's out there. And, um, and then, like, we usually decide on a theory of, all right, what film, what country are we going to represent this year? Or what... Oh, what bigger spotlight we're gonna do? New strand, a new yeah. section that we want to. Yeah, we start do. looking around to see who's doing what and thinking what we want to do. And so this year, like, we're, instead of doing a country spotlight, we're doing the um, Maverick filmmaker section in honor of Ellen Kit Carson, the Ellen Kit Carson Award, with Monty Hellman receiving that this year. So we will be um, uh, looking. I'm not even thinking about 2017 right yeah, now. Yeah, we can. Last, ironically, last year at this time, I was thinking about 2016. We're like, man, what are we gonna do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, things booked and everything but this year I, I, I'm just really the, the, con the process will be all right what, what dates to be because we already have dates tentatively picked out we got to make sure we can use them all right then where are we going to be okay that's easy Angelica is always nice okay the Alamo is cool too all right next that's all we're going to do until June honestly I and mean, then in June we start really heavily thinking about all right what's next and then LA Film Festival's in June um, Sarah's like I said working on festivals all year round I'll do LA I do Comic Con sometimes because there's films there people in studios I can talk to there fall is AFI Fest and Toronto. Austin Toronto um, in the, hopefully in the Hawaii for this one one year Denver, Denver. <laughs> what, what uh, is so. your head, hidden gem to find films like for instance Bart Weiss over at Video Fest he's about the only person that goes to the International Association of Public Broadcasters and he gets a lot of films from there what is your hidden gem I can't tell you <laughs> 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 uh, God, I, I honestly, I think I'll tell you what's funny. It's going to the fest, the big festivals, and there are films in meeting those festivals, and meeting other people, meeting the other filmmakers who may not have a film in that festival or have yeah. something they haven't finished yet or about to finish. That's how it's you the get network. it. I mean, there's. I, was gonna, I mean, that's what it is. It's now, having done this for ten happened. years, yeah. we have a network of people that knows someone who knows someone who knows and then and we get those emails i mean we were getting those emails like a month ago still yes yeah, so you know oh my so and so has this film 
Oh, so and so has this film, <laughs> and that's that's all comes from the relationships and the friendships we've built through this festival, hosting filmmakers, you know, that have had a good time. That's like, oh, you know, this is a good person. Let's connect you, you know. And that's a lot of what it is. The, the, being a filmmakers festival, like we try to strive to be, the other filmmakers say, hey, go to Dallas because that's cool, and it's also one of the top five markets in the country, and blah 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 blah. So it makes a lot of sense for you to play in a big name city festival. It's it's always fun to get. I really got an email about a documentary from a yeah. former filmmaker who has good distribution. I mean, uh, had a great time in Dallas. She was here for 36 hours. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, 10 years in. I mean, I can imagine that looking back, it's just kind of unbelievable to see where it is yes. now. What, for both of you, what's I guess I don't want to just say what's the lesson you learned, but what is the like the thing that's most impacted you after 10 years looking back, and that you want to take into the next 10 years with you as you shape the festival and as it shapes. That's a big one, but you know. Yes, heady. Yeah. I mean, this festival has been my life, and it's it's very personal. I mean, I think this is yeah, it's your first job. this this was my first. I mean, this has been my career. Is this festival? This has been the thing that I have cared for more than pretty much anything else, other than you know family. But I mean, I think for both of us, this is a thing that we have worked so hard from the beginning that like we just want to see it. We want to see it through. We want to see it maintain the respect and the, you know. The notoriety we've achieved over the last 10 years. And yeah, I mean, you're right. We've, there's been a lot of sacrifice. A lot of sacrifice. I mean, there is. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to be an artistic organization, especially after a downturn economy at one point, and to continue because you're not... You're not curing cancer. You're not saving babies, but you it's are. You, you, you know? Technically, we're we're a we're an entertainment organization in a world that thinks entertainment has all the money in the world. And so it's been it's 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 a struggle, but it's at the same time where we feel that film, like any other art medium, is very important. And so what I I've taken it away from the last ten years is that we do matter. People know that we matter. It's just about getting more people to know that we matter. And so what moving forward is spreading the word and doing good work and continuing our notoriety, continuing our, our you know, commitment to film excellence and commitment to filmmakers and making them feel at home, feeling that Texas hospitality and then going out. Like Sarah, Sarah's a great ambassador because she works in a lot of different places around the world now and it's really cool to go, well, yeah, oh, but, but my main job is Dallas. And they go, really? And they go, yeah. And she explains and they go, holy crap, that's great. I want to be a part of that. So spreading that that message, spreading that message that what we're doing is important and people are realizing it, that's what I'm about. So piggybacking on his question, over the last 10 years, what has been the biggest either disappointment or missed opportunity? I'll tell you mine <laughs> with this festival if you tell me yours. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's like, a, it's like a school year. Oh, I don't know if I can talk about mine. Uh, no, you can't. There's you want me to tell you mine to make <laughs> it easier? Yes. yes. Jack Valenti. You guys had him either year one or year, year one. two. Year one. Year one. He got yeah, sick, away. passed away a yep. few days later. Yeah. To me, that was the biggest change. Wow. Yeah. I, mm, I'm trying to think. Gosh, I don't know what my biggest miss might have been. I just, or just regret in a way. I mean, there there are so many movies I wish I could have shown for various reasons right. that, you know, we just didn't get because they had a different marketing strategy with the studio or, or the film was unavailable based on this or it was going to go, you know, it just... Or we went to Tribeca. Of, or we went to Tribeca. <laughs> um, things that were out of our control. There are, there are a slew of films and filmmakers that... Like, I wish I was a part of their nurturing, and I wasn't. So, I mean, that's disappointing, but it's part I, of the job. I'm mean, trying to think beyond that. Yeah, like, I'm trying to think there's somebody I lament never meeting or something that happened. Because like, in the festival, I get really busy, and I'm, right. I slow down a lot. And there's, so, there's other filmmakers that I know I haven't met never, that came to the festival that never I never saw. didn't, because... You know, based on where I was, I'm trying to think of. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of this I didn't mean that this question to be scandalous, but no, you know, no. It was, it was I mean, there's, there's 
was, it was Jack Valenti for me because yeah. I really wanted to see him. He Motion Picture Association American. Yeah. He was a Johnson aide, and you know, unfortunately, he passed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's it's interesting that like like I. The fact that Sidney Pollock was at our first festival and I had an opportunity to meet him when he when he passed away a few years later, I was just like like that. Yeah. I remember that the was great story rare... you told me about him, James. You remember he wanted to fly his own plane in and you're like, no 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 insurance would list, fly his own plane in. <laughs> I remember that conversation we had. Yeah, that, was, that was early on too. Was that like, was what? really early on. I was like, what? That no, was a you can't do time. that. No. I'm like, I don't know anything about that, but I'm here no. Pre recession. Mm, no, yeah. <laughs> Pre recession. <laughs> Is a whole other Because you guys <laughs> wanted to fly him in, and he was like, no, I can I fly, fly my own plane. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's, and we get, a, we get that kind of quite a bit, actually. There's a lot of celebrities that have their own plane flight, flight licenses. It's a long trip, man. <laughs> so if we go, if we're invited to your house, all right, and you can show us any three films in the world that mean so much to you, what would they be? What, what three films have impacted your life so much that you would want to show? Show anybody that's willing to sit and watch. Uh, well, we're showing one of them at the festival for me, ET. Uh, after that, it might be John Woo's Hard Boiled, and then On the Waterfront. How did ET impact you? As I was a movie? Twelve years old. I went to go see that movie because I saw I, was, I had already seen Rape, and I was yeah, it was before it was after Raiders, and I went and it, just because you went to see movies as a kid, and your parents drop you off in the theater and they pick you up whenever they wanted to. Uh, it's mine did. And I went to go see that movie and I just, I, I, I'd never seen anything like it. I was just devastated and I walked out and I got, oh my god, oh my god. And this is that time when I never had extra money. I just went back in. And I went back in and saw it again. Didn't cry as much. It was okay. I came out, realized there was no cell phone. Went back in and saw it a third time. Noticed all these other things and couldn't stop watching it. It was the first time in my life that there was something that I couldn't stop being a part of. And, I, and everything about that film was just insanely personal for me. And it was, and it's funny, I, in a way that, you know, I had parents in my house or whatever, but I didn't have a, a strange father at the time or none of that stuff. It was just, for some reason, that hit me in a way that I'd never been hit. I, I understood something. I, I was in someone else's life for the first time and understood them. And thank you, Steven Spielberg, if I ever meet you, I love you. So, uh, what about you, Sarah? Well, we actually showed one last year that was incredibly personal for me, which was the Blues Brothers and meeting John Landis. Why was that personal for you? Uh, that is a movie that, like, that is, I, I call it a Harris movie, where if it was ever on, no matter what my family was doing, we would stop and watch it. We had seen it so many times. I, my parents, I watched a lot of weird movies growing up that my mom, once she knew I liked film, she, she showed me Kubrick films when I was, like, 11. <laughs> Like Clockwork Orange, like kind of yeah. messed up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, uh, but so Blues Brothers was a film that I watched very, very young and repeat, and it just reminds me of my family. It reminds me of home, and there's you know it introduced music to me in a very young age, and uh, and I and I I've got a I really like comedies actually for because I watch a lot of sad documentaries. <laughs> I have to counter with these, you know, a lot of John Landis films were in my childhood and so like having him here last year was, I was totally geeking out yeah. all the time. We dressed up. I tried to play it cool but every time I was around him I was just like, oh my god, like John Landis. Yeah. Um, he was pretty idiot. And, it was, and he was just a really <laughs> genuine nice guy. So like, um, that for me last year when we introduced him, uh, in front of the Blues Brothers, and my mom was in the audience. That's for that for me was like, I mean, it, it kind of it cut to the core of me because I was like, I can't believe this is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know, now. we've known each other for ten years. We we're all, we were all we were all young, excited. <laughs> some of us, some people call us stupid for you know. I think naive. Naive, maybe. okay, naive. <laughs> How has working with it started out as AFI Dallas, and then it went to the Dallas International Film Festival. How has it shaped you as a person, personally and professionally? I'm much more bold, I think, than I used to be. I'm smarter. 
I mean, when I you, hope that I'm smart. I, mean, we, I think we both are. It's, when you're dealing with, we deal with these filmmakers, and some of the, there's some of the smartest people in the world. I mean, these people are grand manipulators of the general public, and to do that, you need to know how to do that. And so, and they need to be smart enough. And something I've noticed is just just being able to have a conversation with a John Landis, or have a conversation with you know a filmmaker from New Delhi, or have a conversation with the uh, I'm trying to think of, oh Wally Pfister oh Adam my K gosh Wally Pfister uh, <laughs> that was uh, so great too. Christopher Nolan's director of photography yeah. Academy Award winner for Dark Knight I'm telling you Wally's like a laid back guy who is a musical genius as well as just knows so much so much and, and so I feel this has made me a smarter person um, definitely much more caring uh, because when yeah when you turn down thousands of people a year, um, crushing dreams. It's it's, it's hard. It sucks, and you realize it. You realize, man. But yeah, def smarter and more caring. Okay, so got one last question. Um, I was just going to ask for this year, um, us going forward, just uh, the general public. What do you have to tell them, like to most look forward to? I guess just this specific year. We've been talking. We've been reflective yeah, yeah. on the past and the future. I mean, there's just there are some incredible new movies that, and these are the filmmakers that are going to be the next level. We've got. We actually we were telling uh, someone earlier we have a panel where we're talking about some of our alumni that have gone through and are making you know the next Disney movie or the next big studio thing for 150 million dollars. Yeah. These filmmakers that are coming to Dallas, that will be them in five, six, seven years down the road, and and like the interactions with them now is where you can have a piece of that. Cool. Really quickly, pack, piggybacking on his question, yeah. Mark Weiss, Dallas Video Fest, actually puts his email address out on the website uh -huh. that says, you know, email Bart for any film suggestions. Really quickly, what are your top three films that, if anyone would email you, what are your top three films that they have to see this year at Div? Uh, I'll go. Uh, halfway. Um, Oh shoot! Oh shoot! I, I can't. I can't. It's hard. You gotta look at the list. I can't like, stress oh, enough. My, oh, go ahead. Miss Sharon Jones. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna say this because I helped discover this movie. You already talked to him. A fat wreck. If you if you if you want if you want to get loud and rock out. And um, I like in pursuit of silence a lot. That is a good one. And oh, Operation Avalanche. Operation Avalanche. We'll agree on that. Operation Avalanche is something you should not miss.